Alrighty, it's time for an injury update. If you watched my last video, uh, you'll know that I've been struggling with an injury uh, over the last few weeks and months even. Uh, if you follow me on Strava, you'll know all the details about uh, what I've been doing instead. I've been doing aqua jogging, swimming, cycling, elliptical, all kinds of things other than running. And uh, a couple of days ago, I went to my physiotherapist to get the MRI results. I did an MRI scan um, a couple of weeks ago and the results are in and I'm going to share them with you today. Stay tuned. So for those of you that didn't watch the last video, maybe don't, don't know what's going on, I'll give you guys a super quick recap. I started getting pain in my left leg, uh, lower leg in the fibula region. A few months ago, it didn't go away, it was persistent. It was never super bad, but it was persistent. And it was a kind of pain that I didn't uh, recognize as tendon related or, or muscle strain or something like that. It, so I sort of thought could be bone. Although a lot of the symptoms were not compatible actually with a bone injury, a stress reaction or a stress fracture. But because it was so persistent and some of the symptoms sort of pointed towards it being bone, um, I thought, you know, could be a stress fracture, I guess. And my physiotherapist, she thought the same, you know, it's, it was kind of weird, but maybe uh, it could be. And she wanted to do a, um, an MRI scan. Well, actually we did an x-ray and it showed nothing, but x-rays are not that reliable when it comes to diagnosing um, stress reactions and, and stress fractures sometimes. So we did an MRI scan, I got the results and the results are in. So here's the big uh, drum roll question and answer. And the answer is there's no stress fracture. There was no bone pathology, nothing wrong with the bone, nothing wrong with the muscles, nothing wrong with the tendons. In fact, everything is in tip top shape. All right, so actually, if you go follow me on Strava, I've, there's a link in the description, you can find a post that I wrote there today, uh, where I also posted a picture, one of the pictures from the MRI. Not that that really tells us anything if you're not expert on reading those pictures, but everything was in tip top shape, shape, apparently. So in a sense, that's good, right? It is good. And it also means that I'm not, you know, super calcium deficient or something like that or that I can't handle the load. It seems my bones and tendons are quite able to handle the load. So that leaves us with the question, what uh, is going on? Because if there's no bone issue, no tendon issue, no muscle issue, why do I have pain? Because I definitely do have pain. I've had, you know, at the worst, it was like after a workout, I would have shooting pains off my leg, like, oh, you know, like, ah, shooting pain going up here. And, and, and it was really bad sometimes, but most of the time it was not that bad, but it was persistent, as I said. So what kind of pain is that? Well, we don't know, right? Uh, my physiotherapist speculated that, of course, it, you know, maybe it's a vascular issue. I mean, I do have varicose veins on my right calf, quite bad. Could it be a vascular issue? She sort of noticed that one of my veins protruded a little bit more on the left side. Perhaps, you know, something to look into if this other theory doesn't um, work out. But her other theory then was that it could be a nerve issue. Okay. Uh, right. We're, we've eliminated muscles, tendons, bones. There's the, there's the vasculature and then there's the, the, the nerves, right? There's not that much left. So nerves, perhaps there, it's a nerve issue. And she talked about something that I've never heard about before a new concept to me, which is kind of weird when you think about it, because I'm super geeky and obsessed about anatomy and physiology and exercise. And, and I actually never, well, I sort of remember now maybe having glanced across and come, come across this term a few times, but I never looked into it. I didn't see, really know that this was the case, but apparently nerves, uh, they move a little bit or they, they, they need to be able to glide between the tissues. And not only that, but if you sit on a chair like this and you stretch out your leg, or maybe you can't see it, but imagine you're stretching out your leg right in front of you. Then you put your neck forward like this. 
you'll notice that it actually you'll actually feel a stretch underneath your knee or in your leg isn't that kind of weird putting your head forward makes your leg kind of feel weird well that's because when you're pulling your head forward you're actually pulling on the nerve the nerve is attached in your head and in your legs and in your hands in your extremities basically and as you move you actually pull on those nerves and you have a certain amount of slack and if you use up all the slack like doing this you'll actually feel a little bit of a pull that was new to me i didn't know nerves it, it makes sense but i didn't know nerves were actually mobile in, inside the tissues and apparently what she said is that she did a mobility test on me and she sort of i was on my back and she pulled my leg up and, and I, was, I, was, I, I stretched it up like this, right up, and she pulled it, uh, pushed it backward, and she said that I had, you know, below average. It wasn't that bad, but it was below average, below what she expected, I guess, uh, in terms of my mobility, my range there. Uh, and, you know, I, I reached a point where I was like, ah, that feels really weird and, and not good. Uh, and she, she said that that's actually more so than being a muscle and a tendon issue it's actually my nerve kind of uh, feelings tight uh, as well as my my muscles and tendons of course and she did a few different variations on that and and she confirmed that i was i needed to work on my mobility in general but also my neural mobility so um and, I, and also she noticed that my left leg was slightly worse than my right leg which is interesting because my left leg is where the injury is or the pain comes from because I guess then there's not really an injury per se but there's just persistent pain and so yeah so I've been researching neural mobility and uh, you know you come across things like neural flossing and neural glide and this whole idea that you know the the nerves sort of move within the tissues or, or maybe the tissues also move around the nerve and the idea is that um, I don't think you can actually increase the length of your nerve. It's very inelastic, but it's uh, maybe you can. I, I haven't. I don't. I'm not an expert on this topic yet. Um, but apparently, you know, perhaps there's. It's a possible. I guess it's a kind of like a a little bit. I mean, it's it's not a hardcore science kind of thing where there's not there's not been that many studies sort of confirming exactly how this works. It's a lot of the evidence is anecdotal at this point, but there has been some studies showing some uh, benefit or some some truth to the whole concept, I guess. Um, but I don't know enough about it yet to really speak about it too much. But my understanding is that, and she sort of hinted to this, I think that perhaps there was an initial injury uh, in the summer when I did a little bit too much too soon after starting up again after my Achilles issues. Maybe there was a little bit of an injury, maybe some trauma to the tissues and there was perhaps some scar tissue development and that scar tissue is now sort of impinging on the nerve a little bit or in basically causing it not to move as, as well between the tissues. So perhaps it's just that, perhaps it's just that when I'm running and when I'm doing these things, I, I actually sort of inflame this area a little bit and the nerve is irritated, could be. Who knows, it could also be a back issue, I guess. I do have sciatica pain sometimes, especially when I'm driving for a long time. So there is an issue there. Uh, it's quite common, of course, to have these kind of nerve issues, especially sciatica. Um, and so, yeah, I'm researching the topic and I'm doing these exercises like three times a day, just like moving through this neural flossing. <laughs> That's what it's called. You're sort of flossing the nerve through the tissues. And so I'm just doing that. I'm stretching more and I'm, I'm putting more of a focus on my stretching basically to, to improve that um, mobility and the neural glide um, and that idea. So that's the situation. I guess if it turns out that this is the case, um, then that's amazing because that means I can do something about it and I'm trying to do something about it now. And even if it isn't, I'm still learning because I probably do need mobility anyway, right? I, I am quite stiff, which is, you know, to a certain extent good as a runner to be stiff. But on the other hand, you don't want to be too stiff, uh, causing injury and not uh, allowing your, you know, your running stride to be uh, optimal. So yeah, I've got something to work on. 
and I love that. And I've actually been able to maintain my fitness quite well through the aqua jogging and swimming and everything. So when I went out running for my first run, which by the way felt amazing the other day, I've been out for two runs now, just 15 minutes each. Um, nothing beats running for me. It's just like, it's a whole different universe of movement. I like sport, I like fitness, everything is fun in the fitness world, almost, but running is just a whole new, uh, another level because it's just so natural and oh, it just felt amazing to be out there. So what am I saying? Yeah, so I, I maintain my fitness very well with the aqua jogging regime and the swimming and everything. Actually, I feel like I haven't lost any aerobic cardiovascular fitness at all. Felt pretty much the same as when I stopped running eight weeks ago. But of course, my load tolerance is, is what's actually decreased over eight weeks. I don't have any tolerance to load now. So now I got to build it up very carefully. I don't want to get injured this time. So I'm being very conservative. I'm going to just build my mileage over the weeks, week after week after week. And we're looking at probably eight to 10 weeks until I'm back to where I was this summer with about 50 K per week. So just going to do it slowly. This week is 10 kilometers this week, next week, 15, and we'll just slowly, slowly work our way up to 50. And then in the new year, 2021, we'll probably start, well, we'll definitely start building from there, 50 up to 60 to 70. We'll work our way up probably back to a hundred by 2022. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be careful. We're going to focus once we find the right mileage bot, we're going to stay there for a little while and, and maybe, uh, hopefully do some races next spring. I'm thinking probably do a 10 K and a half marathon maybe in next spring. And then uh, the marathon will probably be the next fall actually, because I'm, I won't be able to get my mileage up, my kilometrage up, uh, to sort of marathon level before then, because of these, uh, hiccups, I guess in my, in my plan. But I've learned a lot from the situation. I'm actually perfectly happy with it. I'm cool because I, I got to enjoy swimming. I'm still enjoying it. I'll be supplementing my, the little bit of running that I do now building up. I'll keep doing all the aqua jogging and the swimming as long as the pools and the gym stay open because it's kind of weird now. With it might close down. I hope not. Um, so I'll keep that just to have volume in there and then I'll slowly sort of get to a point where I, I, I do more and more of my training as running, but I might even still continue doing aqua jogging long term because it's a great way to add some volume without impact. Might be a good idea. So let's wrap it up. No severe injury. I can go ahead and run. There shouldn't be an issue. I need to be careful building up. I've learned a lot. Neural mobility. Okay. Interesting concept. I'm going to look into it more. I'm going to do it every day and we're going to see if it helps. Um, that's it. I don't know if I'm going to travel this winter or not, but we'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Please check out my coaching. I have a link in the description. If you're interested in a training plan, custom training plan or anything like that and follow me on Strava, Instagram, and of course, subscribe to this channel. I'd love to have you with me here. I'm going to try and do more videos. I've been doing an extra part-time job uh, on the side these days because I haven't been, you know, that uh, heavily training and I have some extra energy and, and to do other things and I need some extra cash basically. So I just did that. And so I've been busy not making videos. <laughs> And I want to get back to videos. I really do. So I hope to be able to get back into it now that I'm getting into my groove again and running and everything feels a little bit back to normal, hopefully. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Give it a like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.